Victorious Soviet soldiers from the most recent campaign against the retreating Germans were marching through the landscape of Nish in Yugoslavia when they heard the unexpected roars of aircraft engines approaching towards them. The Soviets were eager to push forward and get one step closer to Germany, and were also celebrating the anniversary of the October Revolution and the creation of the USSR. Dozens of red flags could be seen waving in victory. But in the middle of the chants and trumpets, Allied American aircraft started firing at them. The Soviets were perplexed and immediately retaliated with a squadron of Yak-3 fighters to shoot down their supposed allies. The minor skirmish soon escalated into a full-fledged airfight when both sides called in for reinforcements. It was the first and only time in the war that the United States Air Force pilots engaged Soviet ground and air units. Unlikely Alliances The outbreak of World War II witnessed the beginning of some unexpected alliances that were destined to break sooner rather than later, before the Axis powers were defeated. Such was the case of the Soviet Union and its disconcerting union with the French, British, and American forces. But as the old saying goes, the enemy of the enemy is my friend, and Germany was at war with all of them. Still, the United States, especially its military top brass, was not fond of this alliance. It was one thing to supply the Soviet forces with food, ammunition, basic weaponry, and supplies to survive and fight the invading Germans, but it was quite another to give the communists state-of-the-art schematics for tanks, aircraft, and bombs. Stalin desperately wanted to receive bombers such as B-24s and B-17s, but the Army Air Forces never conceded. Consequently, the Red Army opted to use American designs taken from fallen aircraft that made their way to Soviet territory after bombing mainland Japan from the Pacific. During all this time, the U.S. military knew that once the Third Reich was defeated, the Soviets would become the one genuine threat to a free Europe, and they were not alone. Prime Minister Winston Churchill also agreed, as he had witnessed what a Marxist regime could do to a country. The bloody and violent Russian Revolution that had eradicated the Tsarist regime in 1917 was only a taste of what could happen to all of Europe if the communist branches spread. When planning Operation Overlord, Churchill pointedly insisted on landing in the Balkans to put a stop to Soviet influence, but he was not heard. In addition, when gathering with other leaders, Churchill always procured to limit Stalin's unquenchable thirst to take over more territories in Eastern Europe. Still, Stalin repeatedly insisted that the Soviet Union would respect the autonomy of the young nations located beyond Germany. As a matter of fact, Stalin himself also felt uneasy about the alliance with the West, and he constantly reiterated how the US and Britain refused to open more war fronts in time so that Germany could drain the USSR of Soviets and weaken it for a future Western invasion. These tensions and completely opposed ideologies would eventually lead to the Cold War. The Lend-Lease Program Relations between the United States and the Soviet regime were neither friendly nor hostile during World War II. But as the Americans closed into the heart of Germany, and began to hear about the atrocities committed by the Soviets against civilian populations, their perception changed. The United States would be one of the last countries to recognize the Soviet Union and greatly objected to the entry of the Baltic states into Stalin's influence. In addition, this strange union prevented the U.S. from signing a fully-fledged alliance treaty with the USSR, as the United Kingdom had done. Still, under orders from President Franklin D. Roosevelt, a program known as Lend-Lease supplied the Soviet Union with everything it required to survive against the German Blitzkrieg forces during the first critical months of Operation Barbarossa. If not for the thousands of vehicles, weapons, ammunition, clothes, and food supplied by the Americans, the USSR would not have survived the fight against Hitler. Over 14,000 American aircraft supported the Soviets against the Luftwaffe aces that destroyed most of the Soviet air forces during the offensive. Still. Stalin always refused to accept that his nation had survived thanks to the invaluable help from the West. Operations in Yugoslavia After the Germans suffered several setbacks in the Eastern Front, such as the defeats in Stalingrad and Kursk, the Soviets launched a series of offensives to push the invaders out of Russia. 
by late 1944, the fighting was slowly approaching the German mainland. Then, in September, the Soviets launched the Belgrade Offensive to liberate the city from German occupation. With the help of the Bulgarian army and Yugoslav partisans led by renowned communist sympathizer Josip Broz Tito, the Soviets launched several cooperative actions to defeat the German garrison. The objective was to lift the German occupation of Serbia by seizing Belgrade, a strategic German holdout in the Balkans. If successful, German communication lines between Hungary and Greece would be severed. The offensive was spearheaded by the Yugoslavian Army Corps and the 3rd Ukrainian Front. During the last days of October 1944, the Axis forces were on the brink of defeat. The Germans were outnumbered, outgunned, and had suffered multiple ambushes at the hands of the partisans. Then, as they retreated, the Soviet armies were ordered to hunt them down. This series of circumstances would lead to one of the strangest attacks witnessed during the war, one that would lead to diplomatic tensions between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. A Strange Encounter On November 7, 1944, Soviet soldiers were marching near the city of Nish in southern Yugoslavia. The Germans were retreating, and the Soviets were right on their toes to force them into surrender. The offensive in the Balkans was going as planned. Furthermore, the entire Soviet Union was commemorating the 27th anniversary of the 1917 revolution. A column of men and vehicles from the 6th Guard Rifle Corps was making its way through the Nish landscape with numerous distinguishable Red Army flags, banners, and a military orchestra. Suddenly, amidst the cacophony of the orchestra, the unisonous march of the soldiers, the metallic click of the rifles, ammunition pouches, and the engine's roars, another sound could be heard above them. It was the hoofs of approaching aircraft. The people could tell they were close, but the Soviet formation could not see them. Anxiety reigned over the perfectly aligned formation, as they didn't know if the incoming aircraft were friendly or the Luftwaffe. Suddenly, at 10 a.m., the skies turned dark when three groups of unidentified aircraft showed up near Mount Jesterbach. The Soviets held their breath for a moment, thinking it was a formation of Focke-Wulf FW-189 fighters from the Luftwaffe. But these were American P-38 Lightning fighters, and the Soviets were relieved, continuing to march after having adopted a defensive formation. However, the aircraft suddenly made a sharp turn, aligned their P-38s for a dive, and rapidly approached the Soviet column. They were being attacked. The Soviets quickly waved their flags to show the Americans that they were friendlies, but it didn't work. The Lockheed P-38s opened fire and began shooting without remorse as the Soviets panicked and ran for cover. During the first pass, Column Commander Lieutenant General Grigory Petrovich Kotov was shot down along with 30 other men, while an additional 40 were wounded. The few Soviets who held their ground armed the anti-aircraft guns they were carrying to defend themselves, but a second attack soon came and destroyed 20 Red Army vehicles. The men on the ground quickly radioed a nearby airfield for immediate support. General Sudex, in charge of the Nish airbase, then ordered the immediate takeoff of several Yak-3 fighters from the 659th Regiment of the 288th Air Division. As the Soviet Yaks approached, the American P-38s diverted the attack and focused on them, but anti-aircraft fire scattered and took one P-38 down. However, a Soviet anti-aircraft emplacement was destroyed and lost its crew of four, while in the skies the Yaks overwhelmed the Americans and got behind their tails. In the ensuing dogfights, the Soviet airmen finally noticed that they were fighting Americans and not Germans. Consequently, the Soviets reorganized and fired warning shots to let them know that they were friendlies. Still, the Americans refused to stand down, even though it was undeniable that the Soviet aircraft were painted with the Red Star and the column had dozens of USSR banners. The unusual battle continued for over 30 minutes, but thanks to Captain Alexander Ivanovich Koldunov, a war hero and Soviet ace pilot, the fight would finally come to an end. Apology Risking being shot down, Captain Koldunov approached the P-38 leading the formation and forced the pilot to see his red star. The P-38s then disengaged and left the region. Hours later, the Soviet and American air commands established communications and launched an investigation. 
the U.S. Army issued a direct apology to the Soviets, explaining that the P-38 squadron was heading to the city of Novi Pazar, where they expected German resistance, but lost their way. Ultimately, a navigation error led to more than 30 Soviet casualties and 40 wounded. And according to Russian reports, four yaks and 20 vehicles were destroyed. Meanwhile, the Americans lost two pilots, and five P-38s were shot down. The American ambassador to the Soviet Union, Avril Harriman, offered to send U.S. Army personnel to coordinate with the Soviet troops in the region and organize joint airstrikes, but Stalin refused. Almost 90 years later, the details behind the attack remain classified, and no written report about the incident has seen the light, either from the Americans or the Russians. While some historians argue that it was a simple mistake, others are skeptical and eager to discover the actual reason behind the only time in history that Americans and Soviets fought each other directly. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of this unique confrontation between U.S. Air Force pilots and Soviet forces. Do you think it was intentional or an unintended mistake?